I believe that one of the most important things I learned from people like Jordan Peterson is that there are different levels of analysis that you can apply to a certain subject or story. The subject of Andrew Tate has a very shallow level of misogyny, lawlessness, and disregard for other people's feelings. But also, from a very different perspective, you can find references of conservative ideology, a true longing for freedom, and a tale of becoming the best version of yourself. I'm going to argue that Andrew Tate is nothing less than a symptom of the failure of conservative speakers like Jordan Peterson to adequately fulfill the needs of audiences in need of a message of personal responsibility, truth, and freedom of speech. Before we start, my better mindset and legal training obliges me to set up the following disclaimer. This is not an endorsement of Andrew Tate, and that should be clear enough. It is, however, an attempt to disassociate the ideas that he is putting forth with his own person. As we might know from recent geopolitical events, it's hilariously easy to dismiss certain points of view because they are being proposed by the wrong someone, even if that someone is the president of a nation. History will be the judge if Mr. Tate was indeed the right person for the job, but it remains undeniable that as a person, he is controversial to say the least. However, and this is crucial, not criminally controversial, or at least not proven to be so in a court of law. First, let's clearly address the fact that Andrew Tate's rise to fame is neither an accident nor is it an overnight phenomenon. As all overnight claims to fame, Andrew Tate's took around 10 to 15 years, during which he became a multiple-time world kickboxing champion and successful entrepreneur. His social media crusade is also clearly stated by the man himself to be a deliberate plan put into motion in order to promote a product, an online academy of sorts. Apparently, one of the first things you learn through his online courses is affiliate marketing. And what better product to promote than Andrew Tate himself, earning a cut for every person you sign up to buy his products. And here lies the beginning to our story because it stands to reason that if his message would hold no weight, it would fall on deaf ears and be forever punished by the almighty algorithm to the bottom of the infinite well of content. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I quite like that phrase. Case in point, at least some people must find him interesting in order for TikTok to be completely overrun and top level podcasters and streamers to fight over an interview. Adding gasoline on the fire is another thing that Tate does deliberately and transparently, as opposed to the highly curated words employed by academic speakers. Numerous times you will hear him admitting that the way he is presenting a certain point of view is meant to be inflammatory, and being fully aware that his remarks will be spread across the internet and generate attention in any form. All publicity is good publicity, and Tate prides himself with being uncancelable, so let's address that next. Just like in the old days, people are dragged in the middle of the public square to be stoned and lashed for their sins. Only that, in the ear of our Lord 2022, the square is digital, the stones come in the form of being banned from tweeting, and the usual sins include not using an individual's preferred pronouns. Despite all this nonsense, Andrew Tate can call women b****s without context and still be trending on Twitter. So to think that at the same time of this writing, Jordan Peterson has been banned on the same platform for dead naming. Time and again, people have abandoned their principles and morals in order to not lose their spot in the square. So how is it that we can reach a point in our lives where we can stand on firm ground in defending what we believe in? Well, let's start with f you money, or as the kids call it, financial independence. A great point that Mr. Tate made in an interview with Dave Portnoy is the fact that financial independence is not only about obtaining a certain sum of money, which will vary with lifestyle choices anyway, but also about various methods of securing your wealth. Are you really financially independent if your assets can be seized by the government for expressing views contrary to current political ideology? How much freedom of speech do you truly have if the answer to the previous question is no? And even if you consider yourself a law-abiding citizen and the type of person 
that would never run into trouble with the government, can you trust that all will remain the same considering recent events? Once more, here lies the problem. Because simply dismissing these questions, although clearly legitimate, for being asked by a misogynist is to completely miss the level of analysis. Andrew Tate is here, the questions are being asked, people are demanding answers, and his verbal acuity is highly impressive for a guy that got kicked in the head for a living while his brain was still developing. So let's talk about kickboxing. Masculine energy is frowned upon nowadays. As a pendulum that has swung past its middle, women's march towards equality has pushed men into a dark corner, the details of which are to be discussed another time. Perhaps deservingly, perhaps not. What is clear is that the pendulum will keep swinging both ways until finally it will rest in its natural middle state. In this equation, Andrew Tate is the force that pushes back. Looking beyond his mafioso way of presenting himself, Tate clearly states a message of self-improvement and self-discipline, of climbing the social hierarchy and killing the dragon in order to save your father, only to find them both playing chess. Money is but a social construct. The real game is conquest, imposing your will on others for no apparent reason. This is what men do, men, not women. A woman cooks dinner while her man is out on the streets looking after his boys. A woman gives her man all of her OnlyFans earnings and never goes out on a girl's night out. And if you're already feeling the heat and a strong desire to jump in and explain to Mr. Tate the errors of his ways, while I do empathize with your point, please allow me a moment to reflect on a couple of things. First, one must appreciate that there are individuals out there who share in Mr. Tate's ideas. To think that he is a lone sociopath would be foolish and even reckless. Therefore, I would propose a much better alternative would be to try to understand such an individual's thoughts processes in order to better deal with him once encountered. I would also stress that trying to debate such individuals into submission is just as foolish as ignoring them altogether. The red pill is a strong pharmaceutical and stubbornness doesn't even begin to describe the level of commitment some people can have with regards to their ideas and morals. Engaging in such a dialogue would be like playing cards with a con artist, as many of them might well be. Winning the game only to find that your watch was stolen, and your wallet, and the money was counterfeit. Second, as with all human endeavors, there will be individuals setting for a wide variety of outcomes and levels on the social hierarchy. Not everyone will want a Bugatti, and not everyone will desire to sleep with countless women. More on that later. That does not mean that the principles that allow for the obtainment of these exotic goals do not hold true for their more pedestrian counterparts. Poverty is a disease not curable by simply ingesting money. The issue would have been solved long ago. Living a wealthy life, by your own standards even, is by definition linked to obeying certain rules and following certain principles of which hard work, commitment, and a willingness to compete are at the forefront. And women are attracted to men that not only compete, but win, or so we are told. Gender roles and differences. Here begins our not see for work section. Sex sells. Let's all be adults and admit that. Andrew knew it when he started his first video chat business, and he was well aware of the fact that now, when a large chunk of his message is centered around relationship dynamics. I have to be honest, I don't know if I can, and even as a lawyer, I don't know if I want to explain away certain statements like men should have authority over women, or I can sleep with as many as I want to, you're a woman, sleeping with other men is disgusting. Of course, Mr. Tate has his way of detailing why those statements are not pure nonsense, which I'm sure you can easily find on the internet. Make me a sandwich, however, strikes at the core of classical gender roles, revealing what modern society has come to lack by virtue of its insistence on promoting females to positions of power despite clearly 
biological and psychological traits that make them unfit for jobs outside the kitchen. It's a joke, people. Calm down. It's just a joke. Okay, okay, but seriously, not only have we put unjust pressure on women to fit into roles that they are clearly unsuited for, but we have also dispensed with the most profound and borderline magical roles that women play in society. On the other side of the equation, we can hardly think of a statement more misogynistic than men can be pregnant too. Accepting the fact that onboarding female traits into all levels of the workforce, economy, and social dialogue is nothing else but a net positive does not mean that we have to simultaneously blur the lines between gender roles or shout that there are no differences between men and women as if that statement alone had magical abilities that could uphold biology and render obsolete millions of years of evolution. We are living through strange times. Culture is being remodeled, institutions are being demolished, and new ones are being built on wobbly wooden legs atop the rubble. The New World Order now has a YouTube channel, and people still think The Great Reset is just a corporate guidebook, while literal vampires are live-streaming how they are creating the future. Then people have misused the word literal so much that its meaning, as included in the Oxford Dictionary, now includes figuratively. Strange times, indeed. And now we have Andrew Tate. And despite everything I've just said, may the Lord help us all. Only that in the ear of all. Mm. So, let's dance. So, let's dance.